we've modeled bacteria growth using the discrete logistic equation. A dynamical system of the form xn plus 1 minus x of n equals r times x of n times 1 minus x of n. In the discrete logistic equation, the dynamics occurred on discrete time steps. For example, for bacteria growth, we looked at the evolution over 16 minute time intervals. In that case, x of n was equal to the bacteria population size in the nth 16 minute interval. Now the bacteria didn't know that we were using a 16 minute interval, so the 16 minute interval wasn't based on anything going on with the bacteria, we just took a snapshot of the population every 16 minutes. In reality, with a large bacteria population, at any moment in time, some bacteria were dividing. So what was really happening was that the population size was growing essentially continuously in time. Maybe we can improve our model of bacteria growth by allowing the dynamical variables to vary continuously in time. Rather than having the population size jump up every 16 minutes, we could have a model where the population size grows smoothly. To do this, let's fix parameters. I've already made the carrying capacity equal to 1, for simplicity. Let's set r, the low density growth rate, to 2.4. This isn't even close to the real bacteria parameters, but we'll use this for illustration. And we'll set the initial conditions, x0, equal to 0 0.01. And so far we still have 16 minute intervals. So then our model looks like xn plus 1 minus x sub n equals 2.4 x sub n times 1 minus x sub n. This model will have very different behavior than the one we use for the real bacteria data. In fact, if you use the applet below on this page, you should see that the bacteria size, xn, ends up oscillating between values around 0.64 and 1.19 after you let the system evolve for a while. This equation here, though, is still in discrete time form. We're still using 16 minute intervals, and the purpose of this project is to try to get to continuous time. As a first step, Let's change our notation. Let's let our time interval be t, which will be time in minutes. In this case, it means that t is equal to 16 times the number of time intervals. Then let's let x of t be population size at time t. So in this case, x of n is going to become x of t and x of n plus 1 is going to become x of t plus 16 minutes later so it should be x of t plus 16. Increasing n by 1 is the same thing as increasing t by 16. With this notation we can rewrite our model as x not of n plus 1, but of t plus 16, minus x of n, but that's x of t, equals 2.4 times x of n, which is x of t, times 1 minus x of n, which is x of t. So far, though, we've just changed notation. This is still just a discrete model of how the bacteria size evolves over 16 minute intervals. This change in notation, though, helps us see what we could do if we wanted to come up with a different model for the bacteria growth in different intervals. For example, let's say we wanted to look at 8 minute intervals. The change over 8 minute intervals is x 
of t plus 8 minus x of t. If the change over 16 minutes is 24x times 1 minus x, then it seems reasonable that the change in 8 minutes might be half that amount. So it's not completely crazy to suggest that the change in 8 minutes should be 1.2 times x times 1 minus x. Now these are not equivalent models. They might have different behavior. But they're related in the sense that we divided the time step in half and then divided the amount of change in half. We could continue this process of dividing the time step, making it smaller and smaller, and then making the change proportionally smaller. For example, the change in 4 minutes would look like x of t plus 4 minus x of t is half of 1.2, 0 0.6 times x times 1 minus x. We could make a bunch of similar models by continuing to divide the time step in half and the change in half. So now we have all these different models. And one question is, do they have different behavior or similar behavior? One of the purposes of this project is to investigate similarities and differences among these models. It'll be easier to do this experimentation if we rewrite all these models using the same form, only introducing a parameter for the change in time. So let's let delta t equal the time interval. So now we have these different models for d different delta t's. Here's our delta t equals 16 model, our delta t equals 8, delta t equals 4, etc. So we can rewrite all these models in a single form by saying x of t plus delta t, whatever the time interval is, minus x of t. So this is the change over time delta t. If delta t were 1, notice that the change is 0 0.15. And if we double delta t to 2, we go up to 0 0.3 or have delta t to one half, we get 0 0.075, and etc. All these rates are proportional to delta t and can be written as delta t times 0 0.15. So all the models are of the form x of t plus delta t minus x of t is delta t times 0 0.15 times x times 1 minus x. Let's rewrite this by dividing through by delta t. So now the left hand side is x of t plus delta t minus x of t over delta t. This is the change in the bacteria population size divided by the amount of time it took to make the change. And so it is a rate of change. Using this form of the dynamical system, you can explore using the second applet below on this page how the dynamics of the bacteria growth depend on the length of the time interval delta t. The expression for the rate of change on the left hand side of this equation might look vaguely familiar. This is exactly the form of rate of change that we use to develop the derivative. If we call this delta x change in x over delta t this expression is the average rate of change over the time interval of length delta t. Sometimes we thought of it as the slope of a secant line. Well, what happens to this rate of change as we make delta t smaller and smaller? In fact, let's let delta t get arbitrarily close to zero. In this limit, as delta t goes to zero, the average rate of change becomes the instantaneous rate of change, which is how we define the derivative. So just by letting our time interval, delta t, get smaller and smaller, our discrete dynamical system 
which we might call a difference equation, ends up getting a derivative. So it ends up becoming a differential equation. This differential equation is a continuous dynamical system. In particular, it's the continuous logistic equation. So one can see that by starting with a discrete dynamical system and letting the time interval get smaller and smaller, one can come up with a continuous dynamical system or a differential equation that models how the state variable changes continuously in time. You can explore the behavior of this continuous dynamical system in this project.